from Los Angeles, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. The different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's one 800 800 tom 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And um, I'm amazed at men in so many ways. And one of the ways I'm amazed is that uh, many of you who are in the most miserable relationships are in them. Because... Um, we know so many people these days with you know, 12, 13, 14, first time they had sex. And a lot of you guys, it just didn't happen for you in junior high or high school. Uh, you know, maybe you uh, didn't go to the prom or maybe you didn't uh, have any game in high school or you were kind of geeky or whatever. Maybe you were a uh, sci-fi goth kind of person who just, you know, could only get it on with other ugly, homely, undesirable people and... Uh, Therefore, um, hot shakes wouldn't go for you. And so um, these are the guys, I think, that ultimately, when, when a chick finally has sex with them, they immediately fall in love. The guys who didn't get laid until they were 17, 18, 19, you know who I'm talking about. Maybe that's you, right? Finally, some chick, you know, maybe she misread you. Maybe she didn't notice the pocket protector or the buck teeth or whatever it is. Some reason she just decided to, like, hop into the sack with you. And, of course, it was the best sex you ever had because it was the only sex you ever had. And so suddenly you were in love. That's right. Love, baby. You were in love. You were in love because it was the best sex you'd ever had. And before long, you delivered that marriage proposal, boy, in just record time. Will you marry me? I love you so much. In fact, you thought somehow it was romantic that you'd saved yourself for her or that you hadn't had anybody else. She was the only one, etc. And as time went on, you maybe somehow came to grips with the fact that because you'd had no one else, you had nothing to compare her to. Or perhaps she got fat, or perhaps she uh, had your six kids, didn't have time for you. Or perhaps she also jumped a little too early. And now there you are, like wondering what you missed out on. Or by the same token, maybe you married the first person you ever had sex with, and you became blissfully happy. In most cases... Doubt it. In most cases, I don't think that's the case. So many of you boys, and I've tried talking you out of it, so many of you boys fall in love with the first woman who'll have sex with you. Instead of, you know, tasting around, trying around, looking around, first chick in, bam! She has sex with you and you're in love. So I'm wondering uh, if that's you. Now, I know it may be hard to admit because every guy wants to be the stud. Every guy wants to say he's been with a hundred chicks. Every guy wants to say that he tasted every flavor before he finally settled on one. But I know, and look at the phones. I haven't even given the number out for this segment yet, and the phones are already ringing because I know my boys, and I know there are some of you out there who, who just jumped a little too soon. You just thought it would never get any better. You thought, you know what you thought? You thought that this was going to be the only woman who would ever get into bed with you. You thought, that's it. I better, I better stop now while I'm ahead. I might not get laid again for another five years. This is it. If I don't do this now, if I don't hook up with this chick permanently, 
No chick will ever take her panties off in front of me for the rest of my life. No chick. At all. Period. So I'm wondering if that's you. You fell in love with and married the first chick who was ever nice to you. The first chick who ever saw you as a sexual being. Because you didn't know any better. Because it wasn't happening for you. Because you were at a point in your life when uh, you were not only a geek, but you hadn't made any money yet. You didn't have a career yet. Maybe you were going to college. It seemed like things would never get any better for you. You were at the low end of the totem pole. and You thought, you know what? If there's a chick who'll have me, I'm going in. I'm taking, I'm taking that hill. That's it. Done. Some of you may be as happy as clams. Some of you are married to bearded clams. You know what I'm talking about. So if you're one of those guys who fell in love with the first chick who had sex with you and married her, now you have an opinion about that, either that you're blissfully happy, unlikely, or that you are miserable. I want to hear your story. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You know, I just started listening to you. And I, I, every time I listen to you, I just get uh, more and more disturbed about your outlook on women. The Tom like it Show. On... Tom like is shilled, one 800 5 tom right, the only men I want to talk to, and I'm talking about men. Maybe there's some women like this out there. All right, fine. But I'm more likely to believe that uh, women would somehow be convinced they're happy. Being a virgin. Hating themselves to their man. But I'm really looking for men who, um, you know, it wasn't happening for you. In junior high, high school... You couldn't get laid. You couldn't meet a chick. You couldn't go on a date. Nothing. Finally, somehow, you hoodwinked a chick to uh, get in the bed with you. And you were, like, totally in love, and then you just, like, hooked up with her permanently. And uh, just see how that's going. That's what I want to do is see how it's going at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Rich on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How you doing, son? All right. Hey, um, it, I don't. It doesn't totally apply to me, but I met my wife. We were 18, just out of college. She was a 10. It was beautiful. We just uh, the the trick for me. We've had a great life. We have two great kids. The trick for me was, we're going to Mexico. Hop in the VW bus. Tell your folks we're coming back in two to three weeks or whenever. And I just thought that's the litmus test. And uh, we pulled that off. And we've been traveling around and going through life ever since. So I. Just want to tell you guys, you got to take them out and uh, run through a tough life, backpack through the world, and maybe you just might come out uh, smelling good. Now, I um, I suspect that you are the exception to the rule. I suspect yeah. most guys uh, who fall into bed with the first or one of the very first chicks to um, uh, to um, ever like uh, fall into bed with them. Um, I think these guys frequently end up very unhappy, miserable, wondering what they're missing. Oh, definitely. But I just wanted to let you know that there are a few exceptions, and uh, but it's tough. But I'll tell you what, we've had a good time, and we keep on going, man. So hang in there. All right. Thank you for that, Rich. Jason, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jason. How you doing? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I married the first person um, that I ever had sex with. Um, How old were you when that happened? Um, I was 20. 20. Okay. See, this is what I'm talking about. I was so, a good Christian boy. Good Christian boy. And uh, did you have any interest in having sex before 20? Oh, yes. And you didn't because you were Christian or you didn't because you didn't know how to do it? Uh, didn't because I was Christian. I see. What happened when you turned 20 that made you decide you didn't care if you were Christian, you wanted to get laid? Um, just my wife um, just turns me on so much that uh, we just couldn't help ourselves. I see. And so uh, here you were, Christian, and you were like, uh, what, hand-holding? What were you doing with this chick? Um, first couple months, we did a lot of oral and uh, whatnot. We didn't go the full step. And then... Um... Oh, by the way, you've heard of sodomy, right? Oh, yeah. 
You know, the oral sex is sodomy. You know? Yes, by the Catholic Church especially. Uh-huh. And so... <laughs> but I'm not Catholic, so... Okay. So, well, yeah, so what? In your, in, your, in your version of Christianity, yeah. oral sex is okay? Um, at the time, uh, so-so. But was so, 20, so. 20, 20 year old. I've never found Christianity to be so-so on anything. It's either okay or it's not okay. Yeah, I had some problems with the church we went to then. I had some problems with the church we sometimes go to now. All right, so you had sex with this woman, and that was it. It was the best you ever had. Yep. Because you'd never had it. True. But right. that changed last year. We started swinging this last year. What did you do last year? We started swinging this last year. Oh, you started swinging. <laughs> like so many good Christians. Yep. You started swinging. But she's still the best I've ever had. Right, but uh, you obviously felt you had to uh, find more. Uh, we wanted to fulfill fantasies that we never could before. Uh huh. And so, one of us had before. how many people have you added to your bedroom? Uh, about twelve so far. Twelve so far. Are they all chicks? For me, yeah. She's just had one last night, for that matter. You did. And uh, so it was two chicks and you. Yes. And you still think your wife is the best? Yes, she is. Her oral skills. Nobody can match what. Before you, come on, come on, come on. She had to be with somebody before you. No, she was not good at all at first. I wasn't that good then either. We we just explored each other, um, talked to people at work about different things, and. All right. Well, how has having sex people. with other people changed the way you have sex with your wife? Um, ours is still more intense. And just our love for each other makes it that much better for us when we're doing it. And are, do you still consider yourself a Christian? Yes, I do. You're a Christian swinger. Are there groups like that? There's a few, yes. There are Christian swingers groups. I, I don't agree with everything that the church, as an organized type of religion, um, tries to put out there. So let me understand this. There are swingers groups that are Christian. Just like you have there are Christian Alcoholics Anonymous groups, uh, Christian... Uh, Narcotics Anonymous groups, Christian Gamblers Anonymous groups, and there are Christian Swingers groups. There are a few, yes. Well, keep in mind that uh, as far as biblical times, I believe the average age of people getting married was 12 and a half. I mean, you're barely hitting puberty. So do you guys have meetings and stuff, like to talk about your feelings? No. And... no. I, we're not involved. What, you're, what are you, a website, a chat room? What are you? We, we suffer with people. As I mean, well. you're a group in what way? How do you know, that, how do you know you're in a group? I've I've looked on different websites that are, are as far as Christian types. So websites. there are Christian websites, Christian swingers websites. Yes. I'm I'm googling that tonight. <laughs> I have to see what that looks There's like. There's one out in Arizona. Um, trying to remember the name. Christian swingers. I believe it's libchrist.com. I gotta see that. You should check it out. Oh, don't worry, I will. I I've been a long time listener for about uh, six years now. Uh, we enjoy your show immensely. Thank you. I enjoy hearing, as far as hearing you rip on the people that think they can change your opinions and whatnot that uh, don't have a clue as to how to argue with you. You damn straight. I don't always agree with. Uh, not that I don't. It's not that I don't agree with everything that's said on your show. I I believe just like you said, as far as you're not necessarily saying that it, as far as this is the way things are, or, or, or as far as that, as far as these are the things that as, as far as the way the things should be, uh -huh. it's just the way things are. People have a hard time understanding that. I think. Jason, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. <laughs> Mike on the Tom Liga Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm okay. All right. For a uh, long-time listener, first time get through it. Good. Yeah. And i got to say that you are describing my situation. Although gotcha. I did get laid a couple of chicks before I met my wife. She was the third woman that I slept with, met her when she was 18, and I was uh, 23 at the time. And how and, uh, old were you the first time you got laid? I'm sorry? How old were you the first time uh, you got 17. laid? 17, yeah, I was very much... Uh, you got laid, what, once at 17 school. and once at 20, or what? I got, uh, yeah, I got laid at 17, I was already graduated, I was, you know, math club, the whole thing, and then just, like, one night... Are you in the math club? No wonder you couldn't get laid. <laughs> yeah. Then, uh, First of all, how many chicks are in the math club? And second of all, how many chicks are in the math club that you'd actually want to have sex with? <laughs> I, I don't remember. I think there might have been uh, a chick in there. I think she was a chick. 
Yeah. It's tight to say. Yeah, well, it's because they're those sideburns. Yeah. You're not kidding. <laughs> so three years go by, I get one, I get another chick, I bang her a lot, and we break up, you know, whatever. It doesn't work out. Another three-year dry spell, I meet the chick I'm with. And uh, at first, the sex is great. Everything's good. I've been with her for 12 years now. And uh, I got to say, you know, I'm getting laid a good three times a year. A year? A year. Oh, boy. And what is her excuse for that? Well, I don't, you know, an excuse? I don't know. I mean, I kind of put the moves on her a little bit at night. We got two kids now. So, you know, it's mostly the kids I say, she, oh, we can't do it now, and she passes out early. She never responds when I'm, uh, you know, I'm grabbing her ass or, uh, you know, or whatever, if I can say that. And, uh, yeah, there's just nothing there. Wow. And when we do have it, it's nothing to write home about. Boy, so you uh, now regret having uh, gone with this uh, early uh, uh, entrant here? <sighs> yeah, you know. Of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> okay to say it here. You're not at home right now. You can say it on the air. Oh, Tom, you know, I've got definite conflict about my marriage. I get, like I said, i got the two kids. I love them a lot. You know, I, you know, you know, what is love? Love. Do I love my wife? I, you know, I guess. But I, 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 I feel like i got to go somewhere else for the sex. I don't know what to do. Have you done that yet? I haven't done it yet. But you've had your eyes open. <laughs> yeah, I have. Look at you. Yeah, you know, things are coming around for me. i got a business that's starting to take off. And uh, things are changing, you know, now that I'm 36, uh, the 20-year-olds are definitely uh, looking more appealing, and I'd say that they're looking occasionally, too. Yeah. Wow. Well, Mike, so, how long will it be before you are a bad boy? Well, like I said, I got a lot of conflict. I'm, You know, I feel like... I feel like a uh, part of me wants to do the right thing, and then a part of me doesn't want to live the rest of my life without, you know, getting what I feel I'm due. So. And let me guess, like most guys in your position, how many kids do you have? I have two. I knew it. Yeah. And, it, you know, we made the decision. We wanted them, and they're great kids, but, you know, this is hell. What do I do now? i got to give up half my income. I don't get to see my kids anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, if I go that way... Well, I want the. I, you see, the reason I'm asking these questions not to to get on your case, right? Because of all the young boys out there, yeah, who think if they don't marry the first chick that they have good sex with, no, that, no, uh, gotta, no, no one else will ever come along. They gotta they gotta take a lesson from the professor because uh, I think one of the things you say that is very true is that as you get older, things start changing. Yeah, you know, when you're 20, it's just. You know, I don't know, maybe it happens for some guys out there. It wasn't really happening for me. And uh, these 20-year-olds got to have some faith in your lesson. You make more money. You become more successful. That's right. Bang a 35-year-old divorcee while you're waiting for the chicks in the age group you desire to come along. Probably an excellent idea. And those women, they uh, they really work those young boys, too. So they're in for a good time. That's, you know why? That's because they believe these guys uh, find them appealing, that they haven't lost it. When in reality, the only reason these guys love them is because it's easy access. Mike, thanks for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles to 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. All right, uh, you are with the first person you ever had sex with. Sarah, on the Tom Like Show. Hi, Tom. Hi, Sarah. I just got married two weeks ago to the guy I've been with for five years, and I lost my virginity to him, and he did the same thing. How do you know? Because I've been with him, and I know because I was with him the first time. Mm -hmm. It's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. And uh, why did you decide to do that? To get with him? I don't know, because we were together a couple months, and I wanted to. Yeah, but, but no, no, but no, well, here's my question for you. You're only 20 years old. Uh-huh. And you've only been with one guy? Uh-huh. How do you know there isn't better out there? In fact, I'm not worried about it, I'd be willing to bet you there's better out there, and you know why? Because he has no experience. So, we've been together, and we enjoy sex. Obviously, we're fulfilled. Because you don't know any better. 
Not because we don't know any better, because we... No, you're having sex with a guy who has no experience. He pleases me. Um, because you don't know what's out there. No, I've been with other guys. I just didn't go all the way. Well, the fact is, going all the way is what it's all about. Um, no, it's all about going... No, it's all about uh, the whole package, dear. And I'm enjoying all of it. But, dear, you don't, it's only because you don't know any better. Why don't you call him at work? Well, I'm, I'm sure he's really pleased because he doesn't know any better. What yeah. would that tell me? I'm good. But you realize, uh, you realize, and I know this from talking to thousands of people on the radio, there will come a time, maybe you'll be 25, maybe you'll be 27, maybe you'll be 29, when you will wonder what you missed. I'm not missing anything. I've been with other people. You have, not had, you have not had intercourse with anybody else. You just exactly. told me you lost your virginity to yeah. your husband. Uh-huh. And that means that at some point in the future, you're going to wonder what you missed. Not now, but later. Maybe so. How can you be an expert on this? I mean, of course, uh, that you're going to wonder. Who wouldn't? I mean, you think about it, but it's not like you're going to... That's your husband or that's your wife. I, you know what? We, you know how many people we've heard from that did exactly that? The thing is, is when you stop, like, having a good relationship with the person, that's when your sex life goes bad. And if you can keep your relationship going good, then... Yeah, but, uh, but at 20, how would you know how to do that? Um, we've been together five years. That doesn't mean anything. Um, yes, it does. No, it, re it really doesn't. You just got married. Uh-huh. And you haven't lived with him until two weeks ago, right? No, we've been living together for three years. Without having sex? No, we ha have been having sex the whole five years we've been together. Oh. So oh, you, all right, so, so you, you, you had sex with him five years ago. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so you're telling me he never had sex with anyone before he was with you. Uh-uh. Nope. We lost our virginity to, uh, I was like 15 and he was 17. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what makes you think you're going to be different from everybody else? Because, of course, everybody believes they're going to be different from everybody else, and most of them aren't. Um, you talked to that guy a couple callers ago, and he seemed happy. I mean, it just depends, you know. Most marriages don't work out, but I think we will, you know. It's all about the relationship, and if you can keep your sex life good, you know what I'm saying? It's when you get... Yeah, but, of course, you'll you'll bang out a kid or two in the next year or two. I, I, I can feel uh, it. No. Come Five on. years, and I'm not pregnant, and... Well, because you just got married two weeks ago. And we've been together for five years, and I've been birth on birth control the whole time because I listen to you, and I'm smart. That doesn't mean you won't want to. Um, I don't want to, not until I finish college, not until he finishes college. And when will that be? Um, well, I'm going to finish this year, but he's not going to finish till the year after that, and I don't oh. want you until... All right, so two years from now, you'll be having kids. Um, probably not. We own a house right now, and we still aren't having kids. What else, you know? All right. And what happens when you do? What happens to your sex life then? Do you know? Um, it, after we have children? Yes. It probably will go downhill, but hopefully not. But yeah, <laughs> it generally, it does. Hang on a second here, Sarah. Kelly, what did you want to say oh to Sarah? God, you're not doing this to me. Yes, because... I am. No, no, I'm not. Kelly, you're say not... hi to Sarah. Uh, hi, Sarah. How you doing? Hi. Um, 20. That's a big, a, a really small age. You don't know what you're talking about, and I hate to say it. I'm 24. But um, I had a girlfriend that married at 15. You know, you think you know and everything. These young girls out here, you know, trying to get married and have kids. You, you, you're, you were a virgin to this guy. Yes, you are gonna wonder when you get older. You, you, you we will dump him. My girlfriend now, she's gone. She, she, her, she was married to her, her husband for years. They have two kids. They're not married anymore. You know, you, you're wasting your time right now. There's too much going on right now for you to experience that you don't even know about. Oh, my gosh. You know, all you're doing is guessing right now. Well, I guess it's going to do this. I guess I'm going to do You don't know what you're talking about. You're 20 years old. You, you're not even old enough to buy alcohol yet. Okay. You know, you, uh, you're sitting there talking about what you're doing. Go ahead. Uh, we've been living together for three and a half years. We've been together five years. We didn't get engaged until about three and a half years ago or whatever, two and a half years ago because we were together three and a half years. It's not like we jumped into anything... Rational. You weren't even an adult yet. 
Yeah, you weren't. And you you shouldn't have been marrying and jumping into bed with nobody. You were a little bit too young to be doing that. You know, you think you're grown and you're not. 20 years old is not grown. That's the problem with you young girls right now. You think you know everything, but what's going to happen is, I'll tell you, What's going to happen in your next two, three years? You're going to end up getting pregnant. You're going to end up being on the county because that guy's going to leave. He's going to get somebody else a little bit hotter and younger. That's how it goes. Just one second. Let me say my piece. I own a house. I'm going to college. I've been having sex for five years, but I have been using birth control. So, actually, I think I'm the responsible one here. Maybe I am young, but also I've been making responsible decisions, and I haven't jumped into anything irrational. So... I haven't, you know what I'm saying, made any irresponsible decisions so far, so I think you are, you're out of line. The, resp- the unresponsible decision that you made was getting married. So what if you own a home? So what if you go to college? Where's your master's? Where's your degree? Where's your, where's your, your age, your maturity? I mean, okay, that's good you got married, but who cares? Things that you don't understand the world today. You know what I mean? You got married with the half kids? Because after you have a child, baby, he is gone. He is long gone, and you better hope that you get child support. Because if you don't, guess what? High County, you will, you will be on the county getting food stamps and cash aid. Because um, you, I got you it. know what you were doing. I That's got what it. Happens. That's what happens. To so, some you know, hey. better get out. But that will <laughs> never happen to Sarah. You know, sweetheart, I'm not married, because... and I don't have kids. And I want oh you to what you're doing. <laughs> Sarah's love is... Is, is different from all the other love out there. You know, I found this ridiculous. I listen to you yeah. all the time, and you guys are, like, undermining me, which is dumb. This is just stupid. Oh, I, I I'm dumb. I'm the guy down at the radio station, and you're sitting okay, home calling in. Okay, Tom, just take me out of the bong hat. What? Yeah, that, and, and, take and me out of the bong hat. Cause oh, I now you, wanna, you can't take the heat, huh? Stay your ass out the kitchen. You're too oh, young. Oh, God. You're too yeah. young, and I'm ghetto, but you know what? I might be ghetto, but no, I'm not no, married, and I don't you're have no kids. I'm saying that people that don't, okay. that don't get birth control, that get pregnant at 15, they're ghetto. People that wait for, hello? We're here. People that uh, wait five years, have been sexually for five years, don't jump into marriage, are using birth control. If all you got married at 20, you dare. If you got if you got married at 20, you jumped into marriage. <laughs> Taking this very serious. Okay. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show on 97.1, the Valley's FM Talk Station. The Tom Likas Show at 1 800 500 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. All right, there you go. Greg on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Greg. Well, I don't know where to start, but I'll tell you. My wife and I started dating when we were in high school, okay? We were both virgins. I didn't know how to get laid. I didn't know how to pick up a chick. I am 31 years old today, and I have a 12-year-old son. And? So all these people that call in and say, oh, I'm in love, uh, you better think twice about it, because by the time you hit 30, you will want to know what it's like to be with somebody else. Have you done it? Yeah. How was it? A couple of times. Couple of times. Oh. How was it? It was good. It was better than what you're getting now? Uh, it's up and down. You know, and, and, and the other thing is, is I'm going to be all over the board, you know, but uh, the amount of, that you get in the first three months represents what you're going to get after you're married. It took me three months to get into her pants. Mm-hmm. And, and now you got to fight to get back in. Now it takes three months to get into her pants. Basically. It's pretty much the same deal. It, 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 you know, but... The longer they make you wait before you marry them, that's how long you'll be waiting after. That's right. You know, it, it, it's tough. Fortunately, I have the the, uh, the personality that I get along with just about anybody, so we're able to make it work. But I'll tell you, for some of these people that don't, don't know, they're going to want to know. Yeah, and you make it work, even though you've banged other chicks. Well, yeah. And you'll probably do it again. Mm-hmm. And I'm not criticizing you, as you know, not this program. <laughs> I'm a very bad boy. I'm not telling you you're a bad guy at all. I'm just telling you. You'll all do I have to, well, you'll do it again. Here's another downer. I was raised by a single mom. Of course you were. So, you know, Dad was never there, and he he left on his own accord after the three of us were born. I've got three siblings all together. But, uh, 
it's uh, it, it's tough, you know. And then to make it, you know, of course I didn't go to college, so uh, so I get to uh, learn all this stuff on my own, and I get to make myself. Because you didn't have your dad around to kick your ass. No, no. Could have used it though. Could have used you 15 years ago. Believe me, I know. I kick ass every day on this program. I kick the asses of, of guys who grew up with just their moms. But uh, you're doing a hell of a service, and uh, I will ensure that uh, that as long as you're around, that my son will listen to you when he gets older. Perfect. They take me out with the bomb hand. Here you go, Greg. No call. Noah on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Uh, hi, Tom. Hi. Um, well, here it goes. Uh, I was about 18. I uh, just went into the military. Uh, as soon as I got done with boot camp, I came back on leave. I met my one of my buddy's girls, and he hooked me up with her. Uh, I ended up taking her back to my base. Um, we got a place together outside of post. Um, I... We uh, we had sex about two days after we got there. I proposed about a week later, and we were married two weeks after that. And she was my first, and I was her third. Mm -hmm. I was her third. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we're we're together about we're together about eight months. Then I got orders to go to Korea for one year. Mm -hmm. So I went to Korea. Um. You know, we're talking every day. I spent about four grand on phone cards. Everything was fine, so I thought. And when I got back from Korea, I pretty much stepped off the plane, and she was giving me divorce papers uh -huh. as soon as I got off. Mm -hmm. And preparing to dip into your pension and your yeah. military benefits in every exactly. way. Exactly. She, she drained all the money out of my account whenever I would get paid. Uh -huh. Yep. And probably leaving with, like, Bucks. My general rule for our boys in the military who are big fans of ours and we, we yes. appreciate what they do is you don't get married until you've retired from the military. Yeah. You do not get married because there are women who are sophisticated enough to know they can take what you've earned. And as you know, much of what you earn is the benefits. Right. The take-home pay is nothing compared to the lifetime of benefits you get for serving your country. Mm -hmm. Women know this. And one thing I didn't mention was uh, when I got off the plane, she was four months pregnant with her ex-boyfriend. Oh, I'll bet she was. <laughs> and I know it wasn't mine because, you know, you can't get it through email. Yeah, but uh, are you paying child support? And again, you were married to her, so in many states you would be the father. Right. Well, she kind of knew she messed up, so she just pretty much... I don't want anything from you. Here's the paperwork. I'm letting you free. You're lucky she didn't try to claim you were the father. Oh, I don't know how that could have been. Could have been a lot worse. Oh, yes, sir. What's your recommendation to the boys out there who are in love with the first chick who opens her legs? God, just listen to my story. Don't get married till you're 40 or don't get married at all. Uh -huh. And just bang away. Bang away. Tom, the Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5 800. Tom! Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. All right, there you are with the first person you were ever, ever with. Let's say hello to Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tony. Hey, how you doing today? Uh, do you care? Yes, I do. I'm doing great. All right. Uh, let's see. I was 18. I banged the first girl I was with. Now I'm 24. I don't know what to do. I want to get more tail. I just don't know how to tell her. You don't know how to You mean you don't know how to tell her you want to bang other chicks in addition to her? You don't know how to tell her you want to break up with her? I don't know what to do. She she uh, She's going to school. I'm still going to school. She wants to move in. Uh, well, you don't want that. No, I don't want that at all. No. Yeah, so I'm trying to follow your advice going with the older ladies, but I don't know yet. Well, that, that believe me, that works. <laughs> I hope so. Get those 35-year-old divorcees. They're all like, oh, see, I still got it. I got a 24-year-old who's following you around like a puppy dog. <laughs> and they don't realize that you're not into the crow's feet or anything. You just like easy access. 
Exactly. Uh huh. Exactly. So yeah, that's my dilemma, Tom. Well, Tony, you know what to do. I know. You you just got to uh, have you, obviously you've never broken up with anybody before. No. Uh, you and uh, she doesn't live with you though. That makes it easier. Yeah. So. So uh, if I were you, what I'd do is um, you know just tell her you were you know you were too young. She's a wonderful person. You were just too young. If only you'd met her a few years later. Yeah. It's nothing about her. It's all about you. <laughs> exactly. Just like that. Okay? That should work. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Have you got that? Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show. 97.1 FM.